this is prime time to start thinking about bringing in your house plants. A lot of people wait to the last minute when we're starting to approach frost, but we really like to promote bringing them in a few weeks before, and that way that gives plants not so much of a shock. So I know I've been bad in the past years of waiting to the last minute, but the big thing is is to start thinking about it now and start coming up with a plan that will get your plants in inside and get them established. So the big thing is remember 50 degrees. Um, once we hit 50 degree nights, you really need to start thinking about bringing them in. The plants won't tolerate less than 50 in most cases. So 50 degrees is the target temperature. It's time to bring in any house plants, tropicals, succulents, any of your cold sensitive herbs. So if you're using a lot of basil and you want to keep your basil plants looking good, you need to bring them in because you can lose them pretty easily anywhere between 38 and 40 degrees. They're very sensitive. Big thing, like I said, don't wait till the last minute. Make a plan. Start thinking about getting them in. Check for pests before you start bringing them in. You might take a good look at them, look for any mites, aphids, scale, mealybugs, white flies, any of your diseases. And those things will be predominantly on the foliage, laying on the stems. So check for any unusual activity on insects. I know when I was looking at one of my plants this morning, I even had a uh, mud dauber nest in it. So you might even check that out. Now, when we're talking about soil, on the other hand, in the container, you need to be looking for the ants, any sow bugs, snails, earthworms, anything like that. Over to the right, the pictures top left is scale. Scale is notorious for getting on things like ficus trees, chaffleras, anything like that. On the right hand side top picture, that is aphids. Aphids are going to go for your fleshier plants. Mites will get on just about any plants. Mealybugs will be a lot like the scale. You're going to see them along the stems, on the backs of leaves. The bottom picture is a disease spot. You know, just check plants for those. If you see any bad leaves, pull them off get rid of them, just to give you a good idea of what all could happen. It's good to try to get rid of those pests before bringing in the plants. I always try to caution people to use more of the organic, plant-friendly kind of ways to get rid of insects or pests. I would start with a strong jet of water, and that is going to dislodge any of the insects or any spiders that might be inhabiting some of the foliage. If you're worried about pests such as pill bugs and things like that, you might consider getting a bucket of lukewarm water and putting the pot down into the water for about 15 minutes and the, the pest will come out of the root ball. After 15 minutes, you'll need to take the plant out and let it completely drain. Then another thing that you can do, you can take rubbing alcohol if you've got scale or mealybugs and a Q-tip and try to get them off. Uh, you can even put rubbing alcohol on a cloth and sort of wipe them off. On horticulture oil, if you do that to smother out scale or mealybugs, make sure you are doing it outdoors and make sure you're, it's under 85 degrees and in lower humidity because you can burn plants with horticulture oil. Also protect the surface under the plant where you're going to be spraying it. A lot of times I will take like the ficus tree and put it out in a shady spot on the lawn and then I will spray the dormant oil or the horticulture oil and that way it's not being tracked indoors because it can make a mess. The other two items that you could use for spraying plants would be insecticidal soap or a pyrethrin and those are also more organic in nature. I would use systemic or synthetic insecticides as a last resort. If you do choose to use a synthetic, you could try bifenthrin or uh, permethrin. There are all sorts of systemic granules that you can pick up, but make sure it is labeled for houseplants. The reason why I don't like those is I have a dog and children, and I don't want them to get in the pot where I have applied insecticides. So I always try to caution people on that. The other thing that I really like to encourage is when you bring your plants in, if you've got existing plants inside the house, you might quarantine those that you're bringing in, and that way, if there is any problems or outbreaks within the first two or three weeks that they are sitting in the house, you will notice it, and it won't affect your existing plants in the house. The other thing that people like to do when they're bringing plants in is possibly cutting them back or even repotting them. I really like to push repotting and any trimming to the spring, 
and only because our plants are starting to decline in growth right now. And so a lot of times what I like to promote is doing those things on the upswing in the garden season versus the downswing. But fall repotting can be done. I would try to only reserve it to the root bound plants or the plants that aren't really growing well, or you can just tell there's issues that the, the soil has just worn out. Um, big cautions, don't increase the size of the pot too much. You don't want to drown it when you're watering. Don't do too much root damage because remember, we are going in to the dark season where plants are going to be slowing down and don't overwater. Overwatering is like one of the number one causes to plant failure. And if you're doing any pruning, I would advise no more than one third of the plant, removing one third of the plant when you're pruning. And, and once again, you don't want to send that plant into shock, especially when we're already shocking them, taking them from bright light on a back porch into the house that's going to have much more dim light. Just remember the basic principles of plant care. Light is very important for plants. I always promote trying to use the west or south windows, especially for those highlight plants. If you have low light plants, you might try to go to the east window. But remember that sun in the winter time is sitting lower and it's sitting more to the south. So that's where your best light is going to be. If you don't have good light in your home, you might consider supplemental lighting. And I know some gardeners get by with just a simple shop light. But remember that the light needs to be within 12 to 18 inches of the plant versus being six foot away. Temperature is another critical factor. A lot of plants really like to be between 60 and 70 degrees in the house. But just remember, you know, especially if you put them out somewhere else, like in a room you're not using or the garage, 50 degrees is pretty much the cutoff. And then think about that moisture. In winter, you're going to have less water. And so you need to back off on the watering. And then the other thought would be, since we're still in September, you might give them one last feeding of fertilizer, but then you want to cut it off for those darker months or less light days that are approaching. A lot of plants can be moved into an unheated garage, especially things like tropicals, tender perennials that you want to overwinter, and tender perennials there, things like lantana, geranium, begonias, those can all be overwintered in a cool garage. So 45 to 50 degrees, Herbs like rosemary and lavender, they can even be brought into the garage. I hesitate in bringing herbs into the house because they just can't tolerate our heating systems, the lack of light, and our humidity levels. So I always try to tell people, leave them outside until we get 32 to 35 degrees, and you know it can be a little warmer than that, but then move them into the garage. And then once our cold spell has passed, since we live in Missouri, we get some really mild days, they can be moved back outside once those days are passed. With the tropicals, you wanna let them go dormant. Basically, they're gonna slow down on growth. They may lose quite a few leaves, but the thought is you're gonna let them dry out with slightly moist soil. So you don't wanna overwater them. You just wanna keep them in a holding pattern. And so that's a good way to keep them from year to year because they are a higher priced type plant. So it's well worth the time to try to overwinter them.